there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers, come right on in. You know, I'm always thinking that God give us new viewers every day and according to our mail, people are discovering, discovering us. That is so great. So if you're new, welcome. If you're regular, welcome. We're just glad to have all of you. It's going to be a really good program today. Uh, I'm gonna to show you a craft that you can do. And also I have a return guest, uh, Johnny Goolsby, and she was on here 10 years ago. She's an evangelist. And I'll tell you what's wonderful about serving the Lord and walking with him is when you paths do cross, you know, after a long period of time and that person is more steadfast than ever, serving the Lord just beautifully. It's just such a good feeling. And I'm so glad to have Johnny back today. And uh, if you didn't meet her before, you're gonna love her. And uh, Stephanie and Tiffany, um, they're our craft artists. You know, I was thinking before I came down what the Bible says about your hands. Whatsoever your hands find to do, you do it. Do it with all your might. Do it as unto the Lord. And also that Proverbs 31 woman, the Bible says she worked with her hands. And so that's why we show you these crafts and things, because especially when you do with them, do them with your children, you are really making memories that they'll never forget. There's something about that working with your hands together that uh, it just creates a whole different atmosphere. So you're going to enjoy seeing that. And before you do, I want to again offer you the 365 Read Aloud Bedtime Stories. Now, as we're making this program, uh, might be, it's toward the end of the year, and I'm really pushing this because I want you to read these to your children every night. They are written in such a way as for children to understand them. And I want to give you a little clue here. I read the Bible every morning and every evening. And this next year, I'm going to read this one every night before I go to bed because it, there's always something you can learn. And if you do know it, you'll be reminded of it and what it means and what it means to your life. And I'm very, very serious about this because of the culture that the children are growing up in today. You've got to get the word in them. David said, thy word I've hidden in my heart. Thy wouldn't sin against God. And this starts from Genesis to Revelation. And it's simple, simple stories. And then it's got a couple questions you ask the kids. I urge you to order this book with passion. I am really believing this is going to be a great thing to have in your home. So just write to me. The information is on your screen and any amount, any amount you want to send, we will send it to you. You can send it to box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, and we will send it out to you. My theme for the whole year is passing the faith along. We've got to pass it along because Christianity is only one generation away from extinction, and that is very, very sobering. So I'm urging you to take advantage of that. Okay, now we're going to join Stephanie and Tiffany, and they are going to show you how to make string art, and it is very pretty, very fascinating. Take a look. Well, it's my very favorite time of the month. We have Tiffany from Nook and Cranny with us. She comes once a month to get our imaginations going, to show us some projects we can do in our home. But let me tell you, if you're in Pinellas, Hillsboro, even Pasco County, they do wonderful workshops at Nook and Cranny. If you want to get a few girlfriends together or even your husband come down and do a fun workshop, make sure you get on our Facebook page or our website and check it out. It's a blast. You take something home that you're so proud of. It's amazing. So look them up. But today she's going to tell us what we're doing and how we're going to do it. So what are we doing? Well, today <laughs> we're going to do a little bit of string art or ribbon art. It's super popular on Pinterest right now. Mm -hmm. If you Google string art, you will find extremely intricate designs. We're keeping it simple today. These are supplies that most people will probably have in their home. I like simple. Very Yes, yes. we like simple too. It's um, easy to accomplish and you feel proud with very little effort. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing. So this is going to be um, some ribbon art. And basically the way that you start off is just thinking about what you want to do. We've got some basic shapes here. Cross, Christmas tree, the star of Bethlehem there. 
and you I just go that. to Google and Google the image and then uh, you can print it out on a piece yep. of paper. So yep. basically, there's the cross, there's the tree sh they're showing. Yes. Aren't those cute? And, and those, look how cute. Oh. Those were just images that I, I found it. right on the internet, printed up with my printer, and then we had our white piece of paper. And I had a piece of plywood lying around that I decided to paint red so that the image actually stood out when we did mm -hmm. the string art mm -hmm. on it. So here's the image that this she is the put, image. printed. And then it's going to become that when we're finished. So basically you just cut it out mm -hmm. and you're gonna place it on the wood, figure out where you want it. And I've already got, I went ahead and done that. And then the key to this is nails. And most everybody has nails. There's really not mm -hmm. any special nails that need to be used. You just wanna make sure that the head of your nails is um, big enough for whatever string you're using. We're so it using doesn't a, pop off. Exactly. Okay. So we're using a little bit of a wider ribbon today. So your head needs to be a little bigger. Um, you can use embroidery string and have a smaller nail. It's totally up to you. But these are just basic nails that I had in my garage. And you're going to actually nail on each point of the image. Mm -hmm. And we have a little hammer that we do that with. Mm -hmm. This is something that kids can even do too. It's super oh, yeah. easy. So basically whatever I, area of the image you want to emphasize is where you're going to put your nail in. So we're emphasizing all of the points of the image and that's where all of our nails went in. Okay, you painted these but you stain those. Those are actually so they, stained. There's many you options can do they could yes. do. Yes, yeah. you could even leave it. This is a very blonde wood, yeah. which I, you know some people like. If you that. did blonde, and then you did like black ribbon or something like that. You could like put that. stripes yeah. on it. Mm -hmm. You could do anything, mm -hmm. anything. But yes, those are stained. This is painted. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and put our nails in. After you have your nails in, what you're going to do is you're actually going to lift the image off and it's going to expose just the nails. Now, a little tip here is to have a pair of tweezers handy because when you pull your image up, some of the paper sticks in the, oh, okay. the wood where the mm -hmm. nails are, so you can pick that out. And I have a little picking tool. Where tweezers are usually easier. Um, another tip is to keep your image handy because as you'll see, once, once you get you it off, the image out there, <laughs> like, what? you can't really tell what's going on here. So I like to keep my image nearby so that I can see as I'm leading my um, material around. And we're gonna use some twine today. Mm -hmm. Which Super, I love. Yes. Very very simple, rustic. rustic. It's That's perfect. what my whole Christmas is, is rustic this year. Burlap it's and so ribbon neutral. and stuff and yes, lace. It's, it's very good. Okay, so you printed an image. You have a board, you painted it. You put the image on the board and you put the nails in the points and then you took the paper off. That's okay, it. So and that's then you're going are. to find one area, it doesn't matter where you start, and you're going to put a knot around the nail mm -hmm. and that's going to get us started and hold us in one place. And then basically just look at your image and take your material and you're going to just wrap it around the nails as you're going along and following the pattern of the image. Which is why you want to have it right next to exactly. you, because that just looks like a, a mess of nails like over it, there. Yes. <laughs> We're kind of doing a little bit of connect the dots now. Right, right. And we're just putting the material all the way around all of Doesn't the Doesn't it make you wonder, like, why didn't I think of this? <laughs> it you really know, like, does. It's so easy. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> it's like, who thought of this? I see so many things. I'm like, I could have thought of that, really. I could, oh, look how cute. And then once we get to the end, we're just going to cut the twine and we're gonna put a little knot right where we started mm -hmm. to keep it nice and tight so that the shape stays. Now I will say the Star of Bethlehem, I like in the silver. I like in the silver too. A we lot. have silver or gold. This is yes. just a more of a rustic That's feel. more of a rustic, yeah. Look at how And then cute. you can go ahead and trim off this or leave it on there, whatever you'd prefer. And now if you use a, a, a thinner material like a ribbon or the string mm -hmm. for string art, mm -hmm. you won't see the knot, it won't be so visible. Right, but right. I think with the twine and the rusticness of it, it, it kind of just fits in. Yes, how absolutely adorable. And then the Christmas tree, let's just... Um... The Christmas tree is some ribbon that I had for packaging. Mm -hmm. And I actually used green ribbon up here and then I used brown down there. And that you could just pretty much go anywhere you wanted as long as you, as long as long you as made you the outline. Exactly. This is a more traditional string art that, um, where you weave in throughout mm -hmm. to kind of color mm -hmm. inside of the mm -hmm. design. Um, and then the cross, I actually, when I put the nails in, mm -hmm. I painted the tips of the nails gold. So you can even paint oh, your nails, yeah. which I thought would be kind of fun too, which I didn't do, but to paint the tips of these nails different colors and it would look like lights on the Christmas tree. How cute would that be? Yeah, Adorable. So, so easy. So easy. And this is a great project to get kids involved. Too. Yes. I love whole getting, always get your children so easy. involved. It's the, what they'll remember, I promise it you. Really they will is. not remember the presents, they will remember the Doing, time you spent with them. And then when you pull it out every year to decorate your home with it, you they're cry so later. proud because you'll they cry. made it. You'll cry when they leave the house. No. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. I don't know, mine are still young. <laughs> no, wait, the day will come, it'll be just you and your husband and you'll be like, I know. We're there. It so. goes so fast. It really does. <laughs> well, thank you so much You're for welcome. coming. You're welcome. Thank I you for having, love me. having me. I hope you have much. a Merry Christmas. You too. Merry thank Christmas. You. Merry Christmas to all of you. Make sure you check out Nook and Cranny and get your imagination flowing. Make some stuff at home. You will be so happy you did. We'll see you next time.
I like that one. That was great. And I looked easy enough that I could do it. Johnny and I, we were kind of just, Limited. yeah, we were Limited. just um, just glued to that, watching them. This is Johnny Goolsby. I'm so glad to have you back. So glad to be back. Ten years. Wow. A long time. Uh huh. <laughs> and we're going to talk about her new book, Letters from the Field. But she has an uh, interesting life, and uh, she she said something before we went on the air. I got to just got to tell it. She said. Do I call you Arthelene or Miss Arthelene? I said, oh, just call me Arthelene. She said, my mama's going to get me. <laughs> I love that. You must have had a wonderful mama that really got into the details, didn't she? Exactly. I had a very, very wonderful uh, parents, mom and dad, mm -hmm. and they just really instilled in us the values that we need to keep that going uh, in mm -hmm. this generation today. But we're very respectful uh, of our parents, very mm -hmm. respectful for our grandparents, elders, respectful. And that's, that's very important in this day and age. That is one good sermon. Yes. We're getting started here. <laughs> uh, she is a speaker, a singer, a motivational speaker. And um, she talks a lot about abstinence. And we'll get to that in just a, just a few minutes. But what have you been doing since you were here the last 10 years? Oh, boy. God has been really opening up doors for me. Uh -huh. um, one of the things that I started doing, I continue to speak on the message of abstinence, mm -hmm. of course, but I've been doing a lot of work with seniors, mm -hmm. um, nursing homes, retirement homes, mm -hmm. the homebound. I uh, just had a heart for seniors. Mm -hmm. And so I just decided to do an outreach that's entitled Evangelism in Motion. And basically all we do is give. Mm -hmm. We go to nursing homes and we sing. We go to retirement homes to sing. Those that are homebound that... Uh, can't get out and go to church, we go into those homes and we minister to them. Mm -hmm. We have concerts in the home, concerts at the nursing homes, retirement homes, and it's a blessing to them. They love it. They love it. I love you for it. It is it is so needed. Um, how many books have you written? This is my fourth book. Your fourth book. Letters from the Field. Do you want to describe it? Yes, I do. This is a, an absolute labor of love. Mm -hmm. Five years in the making. This particular book is a devotional. It has 365 Bible verses in it, two devotionals per month. Very, very short, very simple. Anyone can read it. That's the way I write anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to write so that e even if you're a young person, older person, you can read this book and, and be mm -hmm. blessed by it. So mm -hmm. they're just short devotionals in it that are encouraging to the body of Christ. You're going through something, you need a little pickup, and, and that's what it does. It inspires you, and it just encourages you to keep on running the race. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to put her website up, and it'll give you plenty of time to write it down if you uh, would like to get this book called Letters from the Field. You know, I've uh, interviewed a few people who've written devotionals, and I'm always impressed. It seems to me that getting 365 different messages together is huge. <laughs> Even 365 scriptures to try to pull the appropriate ones. Was that a challenge for you? It was very difficult. Mm -hmm. But the benefit of it, I believe, is that I learned more scriptures and I kept them to memory. Uh, what was unique about this particular book that you may not find in other books is that with each devotional or set of devotionals that you have, those scriptures that follow it match up with what you just read about. And so it was a it was very intensive study, a Bible study to mm. say what scriptures, you know, what I like to put in this chapter, or, you know, what scriptures That'll in this fit. particular chapter that makes yeah, that that meets what you're talking about. And that's very, very important. So it, it took a lot of time. Um, now, the letters from the field, I first when I saw it, I thought, well, maybe these are this is feedback you've received. But the letters from the field are from you, right? Exactly. And the, the preface of the book is that we're on the battlefield for the Lord mm -hmm. every day. We're all going through things every day. Mm -hmm. And so the, the purpose of writing letters from the field, the Lord just showed me this vision of a soldier mm -hmm. out on the field. You know, he's in battle. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the letters are, are love letters that God is giving us. Every day he has a letter uh, to give us, which is in the Word of God. And so those devotionals that I wrote were just little uh, stories of things that I've been through and, and little stories I wanted to encourage people to just keep on going. You want to give up sometimes, but you don't want to give up. Mm -hmm. You don't want to throw in the towel because the best is yet to come. And so by writing these little devotionals and, and putting those scriptures behind it, it gives us strength to continue to run that race. That's what those letters are about. God is powerful. He's amazing. And if we tap into what he has for us, oh boy, oh what boy. can we do for the <laughs> kingdom of God? Yeah, and uh, it's wonderful that you highlight that, that that Bible is just a love letter. Yes, it is. To us. Let's see, on this, um, 
on your back liner. In one special devotional, Miss Goolsby reveals her heart during one of the most painful moments of her life. Do you want to tell us about that one? And I do. Uh, my dad um, went to be with the Lord um, in 2012, and that was, it was an eye opener for me. It was very painful, of course, because he was not with us anymore, but it was, it was different. You know, we had never experienced having anyone in our immediate family pass away, mm -hmm. and so it was a journey for me. And it was, you know, I had to kind of go through that to get through to where God wanted me to be. But at the same time, you know, I had to uh, get into deeper prayer, uh, more worship with the Lord to, to understand, you know, mm -hmm. that my dad is in a better place. And I knew that. I knew that, but it was just different, that separation from having us around or having him around us all the time. Don't you think we cry for ourselves more? Exactly, exactly. Uh, and when someone comes to you and says, I know how you feel, they don't unless they, they've been through it. They absolutely do. And not. I could have told you, I know what it's like to lose my dad. He was only 68 years old, just ravaged with cancer. Sometimes when I think about it, I get mad at cancer. And, and that was a time when they gave him cobalt. I think they killed him with cobalt. And, and uh, I have to just, I have to just kind of tap that down even after all these years. But um, now you know what it's like to lose a parent. Yes, yes. And yes. God's not going to waste that. And I always ask my dad, I would ask him all the time, you know, how do you, how do you make it without your mom and dad? And he said, I would think about them all the time. Yeah. And then now I understand exactly what he means. Mm -hmm. um, I'm impressed that you go to nursing homes. Boy, I was, my mom was in one for, just for a few months. She lived to be 100, by the way. And... Um, but she was in assisted living for a short time before that. And there was a lady in a wheelchair every time I went. When I went to see my mom, I took her outside, get her out of here. And, and uh, by the time she needed a wheelchair, we'd go in the wheelchair. And I'd try to point out a flower or a bird or something, but I always took her out. I saw this lady in this wheelchair every time, and I finally asked one of the workers, I said, um, what about her? Is there, she said, no one has ever come to see her except her attorney. And I just felt like the tears were going to just gush out of my eyes. And I, I commend you uh, for going. And that is the purpose of going to these nursing homes, retirement homes, and homebound. Uh, it was like I, it was like I could just see uh, people there that that they want to have loved ones come. You uh -huh. know, we're going, of course, this week for Christmas, but they want to have loved ones to come. And I imagined a mother that had a child and she raised a child and was able to play with the child and run and do these fun things and you get older and then your children get married and go mm -hmm. off, you know, and then you're thinking, you know, I pray that they don't put me in a nursing home. Yeah. And all of a sudden you find yourself there. What do I do now? And so we come in, we bring life into that establishment. God we want them you. to get youthful mm -hmm. and feel youthful again and, and find joy and find happiness. Those things that they used to have when they were younger, you know, uh, they maybe can't go out to, to the stores anymore. Or they don't have a, mm -hmm. a purse or a wallet that's something personal to them. So we give out Christmas cards and it's something personal that they can keep, it's theirs. Mm -hmm. Nobody can take it from them. So we want to put normalcy back mm -hmm. into their lives and, and it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I, I stood in the back once. My mom was in a uh, Catholic assisted living place. First time my sister and I walked in there because we'd been in other places, but we had to work, you know, and um, I felt Jesus when I walked in. I'm not kidding. Well, she was there for a couple years, I think. And one day in their little meeting room, I stood in the back and watched this Catholic nun. They would sing little choruses and they know that music, music doesn't leave them at all. Exactly. Uh, my mother could still sing the alto and all that. And one time they had a guy in there leading and she said he got the melody right, but he didn't have the tempo right. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. But anyway, uh, they would sing their little choruses, praise him, praise him, that kind of thing. And then she would call each of them up. There were about nine in there that day. And, and she told me later, she said, I always mention their name twice. So she said, this is Larry, and Larry has a prayer request. Larry, what is your prayer request? And he would always say, or they would always say, usually my family. Mm -hmm. And she would turn to the rest of them and say, we're going to pray for Larry's family. Now, I stood back there with the tears just pouring because here's people with Alzheimer's. 
it's the least of, it's yes. the least, you know. Yes. Jesus talked about the least of them. Exactly. And I'm telling you, I felt the presence of the Lord and I thought, I know all these Christian celebrities, <laughs> they can't hold a candle <laughs> to what's going on here. So true, so yeah. true. It's one of the most beautiful ministries that I've ever experienced in my life. I say it's the hottest ticket in town, mm -hmm. town because uh, th th nothing about an older person has changed. Mm -hmm. You got a little grayer hair, a couple extra wrinkles, but it th hasn't changed. And they're, they're still in, the in there. They're still in there yeah. and just to hear the music and just to hear a sound and, and just to hear the word and just to see them praising, mm -hmm. lifting up their hands and praise, singing along, mm -hmm. along with us when we sing. It's, it's a very, very beautiful ministry. It really um, is. I, boy, I commend you. You say your mom goes and sings? My mom goes to sing. We have some volunteers that have been, you know, calling and saying, what can I do to help? You know, and it's, it's just, it's expanding and I know it's going to get, you know, bigger and bigger. So we do several things, not only just for the senior citizens, mm -hmm. I sing at children's hospitals, anywhere where God calls you. Mm -hmm. You go where God calls you, but mm -hmm. wherever he calls you to go, you go and it's going to be blessed because he's there with you. Amen. I want to talk a little bit about your, um, message on abstinence because America has become so vulgar and just spit in the face of God when it comes to sex, sexual relation. Um, and you've done this for many years. Yes, ever since 2001, mm -hmm. we started um, an abstinence ministry and I basically go to churches, women's conferences, youth events, any place where, like I said, God calls you, you go out there and you, and you bring the message mm -hmm. of abstinence and keeping your body pure until marriage. And it's a powerful thing. People don't realize, and young people don't realize, older people don't realize the power in, in keeping yourself pure that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've experienced a lot of even older people that said, I'm gonna follow this route and they go back into the world because they said, well, I waited and waited and waited and I never got yeah. married. But the truth of the matter is that we don't keep our bodies pure only until marriage, but we do it to honor God. That's the reason That's why you're exactly doing right. it. exactly right. One reason I wanted to bring this up is because of this article, and maybe a lot of people saw it in the news, a young man, Owen Labry, I believe, from a very prestigious college in uh, New England. And they had a tradition there called Senior Salute. Faculty knows all about it. They knew what was going on, done it for years, I guess, uh, for, where an upperclassman can get a lower classman and have sex with them. Well, this young man did, he had one year away from graduation and he um, took a 15 year old girl. She turned him in and he's going to be in jail. Wow. Uh, f for a year. I would say his future's wrecked, it's ruined. And the name of the school is St. Paul's uh, in New Hampshire. If anybody there's watching, please suggest they change the name of the school. I don't think St. Paul would ever want his name on something like this. Mm -hmm. But the point being that, what were these kids taught at home? Exactly, exactly. They, that, that would be okay. Exactly. It's, to me, it's like, it all starts with the home. Mm -hmm. It all starts with what the parents are teaching the young people and where, where you go with that. And we hear so many uh, people say, well, you can tell them, but they're not gonna listen to you, but you still should tell them anyway. You still should give them that option anyway to know Absolutely. that this is a better way. Yeah. You know, but a lot of times, they, well, they're not gonna listen to me, so I won't t teach them that message. And they, and they go out there and they, they don't know where to go. They don't know, you know, what should I do? What shouldn't I do? And then you got people that are grabbing them up that mm -hmm. don't know the word and they're saying, oh, don't listen to that. This is the way that you go. And mm -hmm. it just, it's, a, it's a, a chain of events that take you down a dark path that you don't have to go on. It is so destructive. Yes, it is. You cannot go against the word of God and not pay for it. There's mm -hmm. no way, there's still a harvest. You still yes. reap. And this young man, for all most practical purposes, his life is wrecked. And the article also states that these guys want to get the girl. Listen to me, girls, okay? Listen to me. Um, and then they go back to their rooms and brag. Mm -hmm. They make an absolute fool out of those girls. It's terrible. And so you really need to respect yourself a little bit. Exactly. You know, I was sharing with one of my friends the other day that we need to go back to those days mm -hmm. of, of being young women, being young men, you know. Uh, of honor. Exactly. It's very simple things. Mm -hmm. Opening a door for you, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, coming to the door and introducing yourself when you're taking the young lady out, 
Uh, and those things have gone so far away from the, the roadside sometimes, and we need to bring back these things so that we can discover who we are as females. So the essence right. of being a female, and when you can get that part of it, and you tie that up with knowing who you are and whose you are, mm -hmm. then you say, you know what? I'm valuable. I'm more valuable than, than, than going out here. <laughs> yes, it's, it's so important. We have to know who we are in Christ. If we know who we are and whose mm -hmm. we are, then you know how valuable you are. And you say, these are my standards. I'm not going to go against what the Lord is telling me to do. And, and I know people think, well, that's just so far-fetched. We don't do that. But I yes, know. we do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. There are people that are still out there that are holding on to that banner and saying, this is the way I'm going to go, despite what anybody else says. I, I was just thinking, <clears throat> if a young girl says, no, absolutely not, walk away if you have to. And then you go back to your room and you look in the mirror you can smile, and I promise you, if you give in and you come back and look in the mirror, you're not going to like what you see. Exactly. Because you cannot break God's laws and have any mm -hmm. joy in it. No. Oh, and I've been to so many conferences. I've been speaking at so many conferences, and the part that breaks my heart the most are those that are 50, 60, 70 years old that are weeping, saying, I wish someone had told me. Yeah. I wish someone had told me. And, and that's the purpose. That's why we keep going on with these messages. That's why we keep going, because there's somebody out there that has not heard that this is another way that you can go. Mm -hmm. And it changes their lives. You know, you're refreshing. I, <laughs> <laughs> I really am glad to see you again and uh, to sense God is still using you. You're still yielding to him. It's yes. It's great. And we are just about out of time, but let, re let me remind you again, for any amount, any amount at all, you can uh, order this book. I'm going to make it my nighttime devotional uh, for a year, 365 days. Somebody's already done the work for me. All I have to do is read it. And I, I just hope that these will be ordered by the hundreds and thousands uh, to know that the Word of God is getting inside the home. And it's being read out loud. And it's, when you have, do that, it somehow finds its way into your heart. But we are out of time right now. Love you, Johnny. Love Come you. back again and join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.